Hello once again. It is the Ash Heritor. Welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 and the conquests of Cetra the Imperishable. The Hemri Hara, King of Kings. Supreme ruler of the land of the dead. So, last episode we crushed all of the foes to our south. Now it is only our vassals that remain, and our allies here to the west. They will submit to us at some point, or we will be forced to break our alliance with them and force them into the fold. They can submit, or they can be extinguished. Those are the two choices that everyone will have. Find my heart. Now, Tutankhanut here is making his way to Quatar. Thankfully, the Greenskin army that has been raiding under the leadership of Rarthug Horned wasn't able to uh, make any real gains, so... My will he stands at our mercy, one way or another. Either we strike him with Tutankhanut, or we hit him with the other army that's there, which I believe is under the command of King Lamizash. Alright, Nakaf will get Fatal Blow. He may just be a glorified standard bearer, but he's still quite a capable duelist. So, if we drop out of this, yes, indeed, we can catch the Greenskins. And that bear sounds pretty good to me. Now we need to we need to build up Numus. Yeah, we definitely need to build up Numus, but what do we build in Numus? That's the question. I don't want to do that. No, you know what? I'm going to build the cavalry building in Numus. Although, I have no particular desire to get any of these units. Oh, the, okay, the skeleton war elephant I kind of do. No, it's not worth it. Um, I am going to build the tier 2, or the, the cavalry building in one of these settlements. Because this is something we will need to carry us all the way up to the 5th tier. And if we are going to run a capable elite army, let's actually build an open grave so that we can unlock more archers. <laughs> and more um, Nehekara warriors, and then later on, of course, the ultimate focus is that we will be able to unlock more Tomb Guard. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna recruit another unit of Black Shields there. And of course, the Greenskins are gonna flee. The cowards they are. That's all well and fine, because Lamazash can chase them down, and he will. And Lamazash, he knows how to fight greenskins. He's been doing it for quite a while. That's been exactly what he's been doing. Address me as your highness. But let's not. I don't particularly feel like fighting the same greenskin army over and over again. So we're gonna make this an easy auto resolve. It's still calling it a close victory. You know what? I don't care. I really don't. For the creator God. It's annoying, to say the least. But that's just that is how it is. Right, uh, we will bind their souls to get some replenishment. And we have destroyed this greenskin army. And now I intend to raise Nakara once again. Although, it may be time to push north. Though we're currently fighting. Yeah, no, it's not time to push north just yet. We are indeed fighting against... Oh my god, there's a lot of them. There's three armies under command of Arkhan the Black, including Arkhan the Black himself. And they are high-quality armies by any stretch. Though this is, and this is clearly a unique character. A Tomb Guard Horseman? Grave guard? Very cool. This guy, King Balfra, I think he's unique. He looks unique. He doesn't look like a regular Tomb King. He's also not equipped like a... Oh no, is he equipped like a regular Tomb King? Because there's also a sub-mod for the Tomb Kings Extended that extends Archon's faction. No, he's not quite equipped like a regular Tomb King. He basically has like a... Yeah, it's not really a Chotel, but it's something. It's not a Kopesh. That's interesting. I am concerned about Xandri. I won't lie. 
I'm concerned that we may lose Zandri. Uh, we don't want to do that. Let's deal with the Mortuary Cult. So, here's something that we could do. We could immediately recruit a new army. With this. And I would ordinarily refrain from doing this, but... <clears throat> we need reinforcements right now. We can't wait. We can't afford to wait. So, I could abandon Al Hike. Which I'm going to do, because Xandri is more important. If they take Al Hike back, that's just... It is what it is. But I will not lose Xandri. So we're gonna... We're gonna... Put ourselves right there. And... Ugh. No, I'm going to recruit the next army right down here. And so our options here... Ooh. Sahenesmet, Vizier of Quatar. There's King Rufesh the Dwarf, basically. No, I'm interested in this guy. Last and greatest. After a survival of the decimation of the priesthood, who once ruled the city by Nagash, Sahenesmet is the last and greatest of the viziers of Quatar. Bereft of entombed troops to call upon in Quatar, the vizier has spent millennia awakening a vast legion of the mortuary's cult war statuary. Nagash shall not surprise these unblinking stone guardians, and powerful protective or protection magics have been imbued upon them to deflect dark necromancers' most ruinous spells. So he's a lord of constructs. He's basically a lord necro attacked. That's really cool. Yeah, we're gonna recruit him. What do I just... No, we want... We, we want a, uh, a unique character. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Hold, hold up just a second. You're... Are you a bone giant? What's your stat line, mate? You cause terror. You're anti-infantry. It's large. Holy shit. Guys, I think this is a bone giant lord. Yeah. That might be the coolest thing ever. Alright. Well. I mean. <laughs> what are we gonna do, guys? <laughs> What are we going to do? We're going to make some Ushapti. We're going to get two units of Ushapti Ancients here. Um, what else are we going to give him? I want to give him a, a, some sort of line with, with staying power, you know? Because we're not only going to give him the statu statuary, of course. Let's give him some Screaming Skull Catapults. He should, of course, have some Archers. We'll get, him, we'll get him two archers. For now. As far as everything else goes... Well, we'll just have to see. Um, he's here. Yeah, so he's got the, the army of tomb corsairs. Which is really cool. Alright, but he can't recruit... Or can he recruit more Xandri Black Shields? There's special units. We have one special unit slot. Alright, so what we're gonna do... I'm actually going to... No, I'm not gonna do it now. I will at some point. I'm gonna replenish some of those, and then... Ah, I can't. That was foolish. Foolish. Right, well, we're, we're down one unit. It's not that big of a deal. Let's upgrade this. No, we don't need this. Remnant Catacombs? We already have... a uh, second tier version of that right there. So we don't need... We don't need another one. Alright, Lamazash was victorious. Unfortunately, he lost a new shop tea. All right, cloak of the six kings. This is one of his legendary items, and it's quite good. I mean, look at that. Plus two public order to all provinces. Plus ten percent research rate faction ride. Minus twenty percent right cost. And plus seven untainted in the local province. That's very good. The banners of the six kings who bowed down to King Lamizash at Hemri have been woven into a masterful cloak whose faded glory signifies the power of Nehekara united. Indeed, we are all about Nehekara being united. Of course, it isn't under Lamizash anymore. 
We will now unite it under Cetra. Captain of the Hawk Legions. You're a legendary hero, aren't you? Asharka. I am my father's yeah. son. Who the hell are you? Um. No, he's not. There's nothing. Uh, he's not unique. He's not a legendary hero. No, he's just a normal one. But he's got a very cool passive. So hold on. His passive is. Where do we see that again? It's here, right? That's from this. Melee defense, hero's army. And melee attack. It's three. It's pretty good. Captain of the Hawk Legion, yeah. Okay, and then he's got the Disciple of the Hawk Legion as a passive ability. It's very cool. That's the King of Menemhetum. We gotta make sure that we don't have... Um, any of the items going to just random characters that we don't that we aren't using. All right, why don't we give you a ward save? So I want to actually, you know, keep my tomb princes alive for once, maybe. Give him, give him more of a ward save. He looks unique. He does look unique. Yeah, and you have. Let's see here. What, what are we? Uh... I'm gonna give. I'm gonna go down this road. Just gonna do what I can to try and let them survive. We'll get on Tomb Strike. The land of the dead. And he can go and assist that army over there, or I could put him into Tutankhamun's army because this will eventually be returned to Setra, who has the Hawk Legion. In fact, we are definitely gonna do that because he's the captain of the Hawk Legion. Prince Asharka. Like we are going to just call him by his title. This way I'll be able to... Uh, do I have enough space? No, I don't. You know what? It's just going to be Asharka. Lord of... The Hawk Legion? Yes, good. Prince of Sharka, Lord of the Hawk Legion. There we go. Now we're talking. The land of the dead. No, not into Lamizasha's army. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're going into this army. Right? As for... Because we, we can freely recruit another one. Prince Nishkopra? Or no, we need a Necrotect. Ooh, Shabti Carver? That's a Sphinx Carver? That's also really good. No, we're going to do this. He is going to go into um, Lamizash's army for certain. We need a Necrotect in his army. We need, with Restore, we'll get increased mobility, because that's really solid. So you go there. Any other heroes we can recruit here? Oh, we can even get another one. Well, then let's get a Sphinx Garber now, shall we? Double Necrotect? Give it to me. I don't know if this stacks. I'm gonna assume that it doesn't, unless somebody comments otherwise. So he won't do that. And, uh, well, we have more princes. This isn't bad. Plus two public order. We'll get Prince Nishkopra. He'll join up over there as well. Uh, he'll get training. That sounds like a valuable thing to have. Get hard to hit and conquer. I'm going kind of down the same route for all of the Tomb Princes, but I'm just trying to make sure that they actually, you know, survive. I hear whining. Alright, you have all of your equipment. You don't need to worry about that. Um, Almose. We want to we wanna make sure some of our higher level guys have, have equipment. Yeah, and you, you could have this armor, for example. Is there a weapon here? Yeah, that's to King Lamizash. That? Yeah, why don't you take Magic Resist? Sounds fine. You already caused terror, so we don't need that. Trickster Shard, huh? Alright. Alright. Okay. I think we're ready to go. Got ourselves another army, and we're gonna get a, yet another army soon enough. So then, yeah, who knows? Who knows who will, uh... 
who will have unlocked by then. Yeah, to be expected. So we'll lose Al Hike. But that was a uh, sacrifice I was willing to make. So we'll have to take this back. So right now they're coming to Zandri. And that basically, I gave them a, a free target to prevent them from going to Zandri because I cannot lose Zandri. It's too valuable. So I am going to move one of the... Hey, are the dwarves fighting against the... Uh, Those dwarves are fighting there. That could be to our benefit. Good, good. Rakaf is uh, mobilizing. All right, the greenskins are again raiding us. It's just a never-ending tide of wretched creatures raiding our borders. All right, Tutankhanut is going to scourge the greenskins. He's going to destroy them. Okay, so there's a bunch of tiny armies here. In fact, I am going to support him in this endeavor with uh, Lamazash. Is this support range? It is not. But this will allow me to recruit more. Which I should. I will recruit... Two more spearmen, then. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what we wanted. We actually can get rid of... We can drop the spearmen. We'll drop them as well, because we have... Heroes. So, Ashaka of the Hawk Legion. He will be planted into this regiment, or this army here. So I'm going to delete this unit of skeletons, though actually I will not. Screw that. I'm going all the way up here. I will donate this unit of skeletons to Lamizash. That sounds better. Can I actually do that? Thank you. Alright, so that leaves one unit slot open. Ashaka the... Lord of the Hawk Legion will join here. He better not die. And then these three heroes. Prince Nishkopra. Oftos. And Amose. Will join Lamizash's army. So it's double Necrotech, Tomb Prince, and then of course King Lamizash. So we have two full stacks now bearing down on the Greenskin. They will be annihilated next turn. And there's nothing they can do about it. And that... Is a glorious thing. Okay, um, so we need to build something here. I was going to build the cavalry structure, which I will, because King Tutankhanut actually buffs the cavalry, so that'll be a way for us to use Tomb King's cavalry, because none of the other characters are really focused on that. Alright, we have High Queen Kalida down in the south. Ooh. The Disciple of Sokth. The thief was thrown into the pit, and for a moment it seemed as though Soth would spare his follower. But then the scorpions enveloped him, and after a brief muffled shrieking, he was neither seen nor heard from again. Okay, so this buffs up tomb scorpions. All armies faction-wide. And grants him the ability... Um... Tomb scorpion armor, which is pretty interesting. So... We have no threats here. The only threat is that we might face here is public order. The goddess wills. What's our situation if we leave? Only minus two. I think we'll be okay. Kalida is going to strike out move. at uh, the disciples of Nagash from the south. I've got Amenemhetum here. Now, this, some of this is a bit concerning. Yeah, it still says nine turns um, before we can recruit, which is fine. Now, there's a bit of stuff that's uh, a little concerning to me. First and foremost, um, if we don't take out this army, which I think we can take out, uh, we're going to have three arm two armies bearing down on us. So, this is... Saying it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory. I think we can do better than a Pyrrhic victory. So we're going to fight this. We're going to get a bit of Tomb King on Tomb King action here. Amenemhetum will smite the traitors. Cetra might be undergoing repairs after being 
ravaged by a Skaven pestilence. But, um... A man of Manhattan will carry out his will. He knows better than to challenge Cetra's might. And besides, earning a victory against one of the, uh, not only is this a, uh, a follower of Nagash the Traitor, but it's also a Lich Priest. This will earn him great favor in Cetra's eyes. Or, we should say Cetra's empty eye sockets. But we're going, we won't need our eyes to see. Alright, so I will have the ranged advantage, which is basically going to allow me to sit here and pummel them with Screaming Skull Catapults. Alternately known as Screaming Meme Catapults. We will build ourselves a defensive perimeter. I'm putting my back to this hill. Again, this is, in my opinion, legit tactics, because we're not we're not corner camping. We're nowhere near the corner. Um I've got that there. And then I wanna actually include a couple of these guys here in the tree line. In fact, I'm gonna put the other one here in the tree line as well. So these guys can flank. They're no cavalry, of course, but it's Okay, I can't seem to get all three of them stealthed. If I do it like so. No, then none of them are stealthed. I can't put them there, so what about here? There we go. Now they're all hidden. Screw it. I'm going to put them here, too. They have a much smaller force. But that's okay. Okay, um, so we have a, a Tomb Prince. He's going to shore up the, uh, the, the center here. He's going to go in with them. Uh, we have another Tomb Prince. We have another Ashaka. We'll have to rename him. Then Amenemhetum can stay right back here with the with the siege weapons. He's basically is a siege weapon. <laughs> He's basically a ballista. Uh, our flankers can go there, and we have another group of flankers. These tomb corsairs. I want to look at what, see what they look like. I'm not sure on the cutlasses. It's uh, like the rest of the model looks cool. That looks looks unique, and it still looks tomb king. Not sure about the cutlasses. I, it would, I think it would be better if they had, like, axes. Or, uh, or clubs or something. But I'm gonna hide them back here as well. So they can come with the Nehor warriors. As part of a deep flank. And then we have Ulat, Servants, and the Flock of Jaff. Holy crap, they're huge. These are some mean, giant-looking vultures. And they have an ability. Ulat's Curse of Flesh. Uh, so this can target an enemy. Recharges while in melee. And confers... Uh, this can target an enemy within 50 meters. Confers a 24 second long minus 16 melee attack, minus 30% base weapon damage, minus 30% speed, and minus, minus 22 melee defense. It's just some, like, ill omen of these, like, enormous... Undead birds. And then, of course, the Flock of Jaff has the Bombardment ability, which which we know. That's from the base game. Man, am I... Oh, thank you. Very nice. Alright, oh, no, sorry. Amenemhatum is totally not an artillery piece. I, I got the wrong lord here. He is, uh... He's just a regular... Regular lord. Okay, um... I'm gonna have one Screaming Skull Catapult target here, actually, and the other one target there. Actually, no, I'll have one target here into this Spearman, and one target here into this Swordsman. I'm gonna have the birds attack those Carrion, or those Fell Bats, and then I'm gonna have the Flock of Jaff. Ooh, actually, I wanna keep the Flock of Jaff in reserve, so that we can block off these bats if they come for us. There's a White King. I'm not concerned about a White King, to be perfectly honest. Let's see how well these guys can shred fell bats. I'm excited. Well, look at that. Dead fell bats. Look at the size of these things. <laughs> They're like as big as a regiment. <laughs> that is crazy. These things are enormous. It's like... Oh man, it's so cool looking. I love it. Alright. As much as I love summoning giant rotting crabs, I feel like this is more of a battle for, uh... Well, it looks like we're gonna get noticed. So we can... Okay, that's a horseman. He's gonna come in and hit these Xandri Black Shields from the flank, which is A-OK. -okay. 
Alright, then the Corsairs I'm gonna have move out on a flanking run. Okay. Uh, I think they killed the bats. <laughs> At least, I'm not seeing any bats anymore. I think they're dead. So they can go after these bats. Um, the flock of Jaff, as soon as the enemy is engaged with us, I want to, um... Oh, okay, pull that way, actually. Then pull that way, then pull that way. Alright, um, let's get the Screaming Skull Catapults on here and on here. See, so just get them both onto these units. We're gonna break them on our front line. He can pull in. Use Tomb Strike. Alright, Tide Call time. This is gonna be delightful. This is gonna kill a lot of guys, because this is all against Chaff. Let's see what this does. He's gonna hit himself, but who cares? <laughs> He'll, he can survive that. Alright, that dealt respectable damage. Well, not not the most, but... Alright, now here's here's what we're really waiting for. The Flock of Jaff. May cause some friendly fire, but... Okay, no, this is, this is not a good opportunity. Um, I want to make sure that we actually have a good opportunity to use this. That would have been okay. Yeah, you know what? Right here. Boom! That did something. Okay. Get the, uh, Screaming Skull Catapults onto there. Okay, so they've spawned a unit of some kind. Um, let's actually get them stuck in against this, uh, White King here. I want to see how effective they are against that type of enemy. We can have our Corsairs move this way, actually, before we engage, and then they'll engage from that direction. These guys move over here and then engage, then we can get the full surround. Uh, okay, so they've summoned Ushabti in on my Screaming Skull Catapults, which I'm not a big fan of. So I'm going to pull my Tomb Prince back. All right, let's get another uh, let's get another tide call here. Where to? Where like our our line is doing fine. We don't strictly speaking need to do it, but I want to. All right, this may hit some of our own guys, but again, it's okay. Yeah, I clipped our own units, but that's fine. Okay, you guys, uh, please kill the Ushabti. Okay, they're gonna take out one of the screaming skull catapults, which is unfortunate. But not much to be done about it at this point. The Flock of Jaff is killing things, which is good. They are doing well. These guys can flank. These guys can engage here. No reason to, uh... Oh, look at this. I didn't even notice this. Necker and Phalanx. This is Xandry Black Shields. Yeah, you, you pull into the Phalanx as well. And you guys. How are we doing here? We're doing okay. Let's get the Assyrian's Legion of the Underworld um, to engage here on the flanks. We should be able to beat these uh, Skeleton Spearmen quickly enough, because these are a meat grinder unit. They are quite good against uh, Chaff. I, I say they're quite good. They're, they're decent. They're Tomb King's infantry. They're not, they're not stellar. <laughs> they're not going to excel anywhere. Okay. Um... We've at least gotten rid of the Ushapti. We have lost a Screaming Skull Catapult, but... You know, if that's the only important unit we lose in this battle, I am perfectly okay with that. Yeah, and looks like we, we have victory now. Uh, this fight is over. Wonderful. All that's left is the White King. Let's send the, uh, the giant Hellbirds after them. Let's send all of our giant Hellbirds after them. Alright, they're, uh... Their Lich Priest is dead. That makes me happy. That makes Sutra happy. Our other Hellbirds are here. I'm very interested to see what kind of kills the Menem Hethem got. Same with the Flock of Jaff, because they were stuck in, in melee for most of the game, aside from when they did their bombing. I don't think the, uh, the Ulat servants got very many kills, but... Yeah, they're gone. Alright. That's the end of that. Decisive victory. Yeah, a little bit better than Pyrrhic, huh? Yeah, you got 144 kills. What is the deal with these skeleton warriors? Wow, they did well for themselves. Not sure how, but they did. Screaming Skull Catapults did a number, of course. The Flock of Jaff, respectable. 
Good damage value too. Yeah, these guys got a lot of damage value as well. 43 kills. It's pretty good. Um, 992 value. He got a ton of value. Holy crap. What was he doing? I mean, he, he wiped out a lot of their infantry, but I guess he must have killed their Lich Priest too. We did send him after the Lich Priest. Tomb Princes, both still alive. That's good. And the Legion of the Underworld did well. Xandry Black Shields held. Like, they, they, they didn't take much damage. In fact, nothing aside from the um, Screaming Skull Catapults that got Alpha Striked by the uh, the Summon Dushapti took much damage. So, ultimately, I'm pretty happy with how this went. Shame about the, the Catapults, but we can rebuild. I'm sure there's more bones and skulls that we can fashion into new ones. Lost under the sands. After all, many thousands of years of civilizations lived and died in these lands before... Well, the gas removed the living part from the equation. We'll get vengeance on him. Or at least we'll get vengeance on his servant. We will destroy Arkhan. This is the first victory. First blood. Well, first um, bone dust shed by King Amenemhetham. Setar will be pleased. Once he reawakens. All right. A little bind souls. Slaves Fantastic. Again, the enemies are able to retreat for some reason. Not sure how that's possible, but you know what? Whatever. Retreat to Zandri. We'll hold up there. They can't hit us. Okay. So. Only at rank 14 can he get that. That's the mount we're going to give him. We're not going to give him a skeleton chariot. No. But now we can get him the Vulture of the High Seas. Which is really cool. But, you know, I would like to get him more spells. I would like to give him the Kraken's Pull. I don't want to give him Van Geist's Revenge, just because it doesn't really make thematic sense. Kraken's Pull works just fine, though. Uh, and then, of course... Arcane Conduit. And the usual stuff. But, I want to go down his unique line. We're going to get uh, Vulture of the High Seas. Uh, King Amenemhetum of Xandri dedicated feverently every sacri or every success to Uelat. To Uelat. Man, I, that one's just really hard to pronounce. His forces picked over the bones of every battle, finding much value in the wreckage of, of battles. Xandri rose to be one of the richest of the city-states with these tactics, and the Nehkaran navy ruled the seas and oceans with unchallenged might. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so you are Prince Asharka, you will be called something else. Uh, we will call you Shoshank. Plenty of, uh, pharaoh names to go off of, and I do know lots of them, because... I've studied Egyptian history quite a bit at this point, because, um, the... Next subsetting of the uh, the setting that I'm creating for um, my tabletop game um, is going to be set in a uh, an ancient Egypt themed region of the world. They're alive. They're not. They're not like the Tomb Kings. Um, they are very much alive. But uh, it's nevertheless a uh, good good excuse to. Read up or watch up on my uh, Egyptian history. Got some full plate armor. These guys, and yeah. Xandri has been held. So there's this army, he cannot. Uh, they cannot reach Xandri. These guys. I don't think they can reach Xandri either. Yeah, not while the dwarves are there. Greybeard's prospectors. You're fighting against. You're fighting against the disciples of Nagash, are you? You're not. But. Would you like to fight against the Disciples of Nagash? We'll hear it before Gold. What if I... Give you some gold? No? What about more gold? More gold? Really? Well then. I don't want to. Okay. That is disappointing. Submit the grass smiles. The creator god blesses. Not yet. Eventually I'm going to make a demand, and if he refuses that'll be the end of our amenable arrangement. They will serve. 
I will accept nothing less than complete and total subservience. Alright, let's get two more archers. There'll be four archers in this force. And then we can... You know what? Just regular old skeleton warriors. Sounds good to me. And here. We've already advanced. So there's nothing more to be done. But let's look at Kalita. We are, I think we already advanced with her this turn. I'm getting a little confused about what turn what has happened in. I think we're good here. Yes, we will bring you Neferata's head as soon as we get a Neferata DLC. Which I'm really looking forward to. You'll be damn certain that I'm going to play her. She's one of my favorite characters in the setting. Yeah, I, I can't wait for Neferata. I can't wait for Thankwul. Oh, the Rakoff dynasty dissolved its trade agreement with us, huh? Why would it do that? Is this out of circumstance, or, uh... Is this a betrayal? No, okay, I think it's out of circumstance, because they lost the Pools of Despair. But they're gonna come and try and retake it, but... I wonder what the chances are of us taking it first. I don't think... I don't think there's a good chance of that happening. No. Cetra is ready. He will return. He will return and he is going to take Tutankhamun's place. First, I'm going to remove Tutankhamun's items, because he won't need them. Temporarily. We are going to get him back, don't you worry. But for now... Cetra... ...will lead this army. He leveled up before he was defeated. Before he was temporarily defeated, I should say. Now... This is what I want. Restless minions. It's basically going to improve his Tomb Guard, and give us more Tomb Guard capacity. And Royal Guard capacity, which is definitely something I want. So, we'll get Restless Minions. And, uh, we will destroy the Greenskins. They will be annihilated. Is this Pyrrhic victory? I call bullshit. We'll fight this. Sorry for continuously having to fight these battles against the uh, wretched Savage Orcs, but they leave me no choice with this ridiculous auto-resolve. So, I guess we have to fight them. Ah, they may have a choke point, which is fine for me if they want to hold up there, because I have the ranged advantage with skeleton archers and... Actually, just skeleton archers. It's not much of a ranged advantage, but I will... If they, if they stay there, it will still be an advantage to me, because they have the mobility advantage, and choke points automatically favor whoever does not have the mobility advantage. Obviously. Like, that doesn't take much knowledge in ancient warfare or medieval warfare, or, e or hell, even modern warfare, to, to know that. Alright, so this is the one way across a land bridge crossing the chasm. Unfortunately, we, uh... We're not favored by Reynold. Okay, so. This is going to be our front line, and then I'm going to put these two on the sidelines. Okay. We'll move like this. I will put the Bronze Host of Kasabar right back here on the flanks. And then the archers here in the middle. We're going to move as one big block. Actually, Cetra is going to join them. Okay. Uh, along with Asharka. He's going to he's gonna take up position alongside Cetra. I want to actually take a look at him. I seriously think this guy is unique. At least he just looks unique. I'm pretty sure he's added by the... Uh, like, he's got the regular Tomb Prince weapons, but his helmet... Looks like... Yeah, it's a, it's a fucking hawk's face. And it looks awesome. And he's not even a legendary character. Just this, this, this I think it's from the Tomb, Tomb Kings Extended mod, which is just awesome. This mod has been a joy. Yes, it's got some units that I won't use. I, I find them to be a little bit of a stretch for the lore. Like, yeah, okay, it doesn't specifically say that they're not that, but... 
All right, we will advance. As far as this host, I mean, we can put our entire formation here. We can bring all of them here to bolster the front line. Right? And all of these guys can come up as well. Take a second line. I can join here. Room enough for everyone. So if we can take the Boar Boys... That would be great. That would be real great. Alright, and this is what, we're re what we've really come here for. Let's do Shop Tea. Just a massive front line. Okay, it looks like some of their boar boys are going to sneak past our chariots. Or, or sneak past our front line. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, you guys pull them, take them there. I definitely want to have... Okay, this is this is going to be annoying. The Nakaf can run in. Alright, this is good. Hold them in. Hold them in. We can mow them down. Let's get this archer unit a little bit farther back. They've they've snuck past. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna have uh, Nakaf here head them off. The rest of the chariots I'm not gonna engage because they won't be they won't be effective here at all. I need to plug this plug this gap, but I don't think I'm going to be able to plug the gap. They've already they've already gotten around us. So um, we unfortunately we're not able to exploit the choke point. But that's okay. I think we'll be fine. Good. They're gone. I don't think they'll survive. So we do have Screaming Skull Catapults. Screaming Skull Catapults can take up position right along here, I think. It'll take them a while to get here. The battle might be over before that even happens. But we'll see. You guys pull there. Um, where's Cetra? Z straight in the middle? Not quite. I'm gonna wait for their, uh... Man, they have so many cavalry. This is ridiculous. Hold. And we will cast that on him. Or on these guys. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna pull my ranged units out. I'm gonna put them in group four. I'm gonna take them off of skirmish mode. Okay. Uh, we have, at the very least, taken these ones out of commission. They might rally. I would be surprised if they didn't. Yeah, they already are. I'm gonna head them off with one unit of spearmen. I'm not gonna devote any more to them. So I think we'll be fine. King Lamizash can get in there and start shooting into the orcs. Alright, Cetra, I want you to just wade into the thick of it. This may result in him getting wounded again, but... He just does... Like, he can dish out so much pain. Actually, shoot into there. What are you guys doing? Just like, if we shoot into there, we literally can't miss. Same with you guys. Get, get in there. Get right on in there. You guys engage. He's already shooting. He's gonna inflict so many casualties. He should get actually with my uh, range contingent. All right, we got these guys here. They are advancing this way. I want to actually pull them into the center. We got to make sure our tomb prince survives. That is very important. I don't want to lose any more. We can't. Yeah, this is this is a bit sloppy. It's definitely a bit sloppy. We need to we need to maintain a tight formation. Unfortunately, ish. It's always annoying when these guys route behind our lines, so we have to worry about them. Yeah, you pull here, um, and then you can get in. Okay, get in on them. You guys advance there. Yeah, these, these biggins are gonna be a bit of an issue for us. Where's Lamizash? You're Lamizash. You can go into group four. Alright, Cetra, you're kind of stuck in. Maybe a bit too stuck in. Yeah, we've definitely suffered some losses. You guys need to pull in. Come on, guys. Oh, my God. We got reinforcements coming. 
We may lose the guardians of the uh, Alabaster Tower, which would be unfortunate, but... Okay, don't engage too far. You guys just engage there. You guys engage here. Pull into that way. Yeah, everybody in here. Everybody in there. Just... Put them in that Royal Rumble. I'm gonna have my chariots chase these guys down. Got nothing better to do with them. Actually, I'll have my chariots... This unit of chariots chase them. Unit 4, shoot the biggins. The biggins are the real threat. Okay, I need to be careful with the Necrotects. They're not, like, super... Super potent. Cetra should pull out. Cetra needs to pull out. He's taking a bit of damage. Okay. Get out of there for now. You can hold the line. Yeah, there's still quite a few of them. This is this is not over. I would like my units to not turn hmm, wedge formation, huh? This is interesting. I like the formations. It's very cool. Don't even notice them most of the time, but okay. Pull up. Advance. All right, we are definitely beating beating the brakes off of them right now. Okay, now we hold. Want these guys to pull up? Pull up to here. You guys pull up to here as well. I think our chariots are doing fine. Yeah, they're just chasing chasing the boar boys down. Now our catapults are in range, so this is this is gonna get real messy for the uh, greenskins. Uh, I would like my shop team not to overextend. I would actually like my entire army not to overextend, so let's pull back. Let's maintain a uh, hold position formation here. Okay. Um, thankfully, yeah, because I have Necrotects, I can heal my shop team, which is what we're going to do. Cetra, yeah, you stay right there. You provide a bit of spell support, would ya? Don't... Don't overcast it, though. Okay, I don't know why that's not working. There we go. It's a bit hard to see. Alright, let's just switch, uh, switch the camera to here. Okay, um... How's all this going? I mean, these are the Shopti Ancients, but man... <laughs> this is just... This is just messy. Alright, uh, I wanna actually have the, uh... Screaming Skull Catapults pummel the, uh, Savage Orc Error Boys. Because they're right now causing me problems. I could have McCaffron in there, but he may not come back if he does. Let's pull up the Skeleton Warriors and the Spearmen. The Bronze Host? Yeah, they're, they're advancing. That's fine. I think we are winning. Just, just seems that way for now. All right, let's send in the calf. Where is he? There he is. Send in, send in the, send in a lot of them. Send in the whole shebang. Let's take him down. All right, we won. It was a nasty battle. Lots of casualties. Not so many on our side, but lots on their side. Unfortunately, there's still quite a few of them, so chances are they're going to... Actually, I don't know, because we did attack them in their settlement, so this this might just be it. But just in case, Nikaf is going to go on a little bit of a killing spree. Oh, there's an orc shaman there, huh? Well, unfortunately, he's going to get away. Alright, you know what? Whatever. It's fine. We won. Decisive victory. Looking at the kills here. Nothing too spectacular in this army. That's to be expected. The kills are pretty spread thin. Macaf actually did quite well. And the Bronze Host, of course. Respectable. 
They're such a just like world beater unit. They're so good. The Hawk Legion, again, kind of underperforming. King Nikesh's Scorpion Legion did well. Guardians of the Alabaster Tower did well too. Yeah, Chariots didn't do much. I didn't really engage them. Not great in choke point fights. But the uh, the Orcs are definitely beaten. They're certainly worse for wear. So if we do have to fight them again, hopefully we'll be able to just auto-resolve it. I'll be very annoyed if we can't. Because, like, if we won this with a decisive victory, logically we can kill everything that's left with also a decisive victory, but watch it give us, like, a Pyrrhic victory or something. <sighs> I don't know why the auto-resolve is so skewed when it comes to Tomb Kings and Greenskins. I don't know if it's Greenskins' problem. Because it seems like the Tomb King auto-resolve is fine in most other situations. So I think it's just the Greenskins. It's pound for pound. They are, you know, Greenskins are quite good. Um, their infantry and, and their cav is, is... It's not to be sneezed at. They're not the best in the world. But their advantage is, like... They're quite capable in melee and they're also numerous. Alright. Um, so we've got the standard of discipline, which I actually want to give to the Guardians of the Alabaster Tower. We are going to replenish, of course, because we can't harvest their organs. Yeah, unfortunately they pulled back into their city. That's annoying. Alright. No, Cetra does not serve. So, uh, Ashaka leveled up. Victory, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will get him full plate armor. And a lot of guys leveled up here, so we got this Tomb Prince leveling up. Um, we'll give him Tomb Strike and full plate armor. We gotta, we gotta just make this sure they're survivable before we do anything else with them. I just don't want them dying. It's very annoying. Uh, we get... Him Stone Shaper, and I, I guess we'll get improved mobility. Just just in case it does stack, then that'll be pretty handy. We got two of them. And uh, here we will get Stone Shaper and Wrath of the Creator. They all have the same stat line, functionally. Alright, and Cetra can finish the town. I guess it says close victory, but it doesn't look like we lose anything, aside from the Guardians of the Alabaster Tower. Which is annoying. But it is what it is. And... I feel like it's time we move north. I'm gonna take it. We need a foothold here. Can't have them continuously recolonizing it. So, Cetra leveled up. Uh, he will continue getting restless minions. He'll improve his tomb guard. The day of awakening comes. King Lamazash. He, he did not level up. Okay. Just Cetra. And the calf. Um, what do we give the calf? We kind of already got all of his unique stuff, so let's uh, give him devastating charge. I mean, he's a chariot character, so. We'll have him do what he does. Unfortunately, all of the Greenskins were able to retreat from this, which is obnoxious, but we'll get at least this one. We'll wipe them out. Goodbye. There, they are, at the very least, dead. Alright. You can pull back and reinforce here, and they all leveled up, which is great. King Lamizash. We will get Sunscorched Bones. Prince Nishkopra will get the usual deal. The princess, actually, I'm going to give him training. And then the Necrotex. Can we get the next skill group? No, we cannot. Alright. Um, then, you know what? We're going to go Canopic Jar Hoarder with, for these guys. Got to get more jars of organs. Can't go wrong with more. Alright, these little teeny green skin 
forces are going to be annoying. Especially if they all, you know, route to the five winds and disappear to who knows where. Alright, um... So... Sahenismet, what else can we give you? Vote just Spearman, for now. Uh, actually, let's see, are there any uh, Tomb Princes? Yeah, we can get you a Tomb Prince. Which I think is good. Um, let's... Sick Tufts? Okay, so there's another one with the Hawk Hat. Alright, so it's not unique. It is another model, though. Which, you know, more, var more variety is always good. I would like more Necrotex, but I can't field any more here. But I will give... Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this guy. So he's gonna drop into this army. We just have so many uh, Tomb Princes that we can recruit, which is great. It's good to have a bunch of them. Okay, Conqueror, just the usual usual deal. You drop in there. Actually, can we get another one? No, we are finally out. Yeah, we can get Lich Priests, but we don't do that kind of stuff around here. We don't take kindly to their kind. All right. So there's a lot of uh, potential Tomb Guard to recruit. So in order to have something of a main line, I am going to recruit two basic Tomb Guard. And then, so we got technically four more slots. I'm not going to get more Ushabti because I want those to go in Lamizash's army. So I will... Fill it up with Skeleton Spearmen. I know it's boring, but... That's what we got. Alright, you can get another unit of Xandri Black Shields. You'll have four. And... What else can you recruit? You can recruit more of these, can't you? Well then, do it. Get more Corsairs. Alright. There are five armies from the Disciples of Nagash. Very close to our borders. But we should be okay. So we have... Smited the Greenskins. We can upgrade Qu Quatar. Alright, actually, I want to upgrade... Yeah, I want to upgrade Numas. Definitely want to upgrade the capital. Uh, anything to upgrade here? No, it doesn't look like it. And in Khemri? No. Alright. It's all fine. Down here? Yeah, we only have one of the territories, unfortunately. Uh, but Khalida's here, and Khalida can advance. And look at that. I have an idea. No, no, no. We, we, uh... I just want to make sure we don't get attacked by two armies at the same time. I can deal with one, especially if it's a, uh non-unique one. So, I'm going to put Kalita's army right here. So from here she should be able to strike out at the Pools of Despair if the Rakaf dynasty doesn't take it first. I'm hoping they don't, because it doesn't seem like the Rakaf dynasty is going to come along willingly in the end. They're allied to us for now. But they don't serve, or they don't show quite enough deference. They haven't knelt before Cetra. No, and it looks like the, uh... Okay, this is perfect, actually, because they've just left it undefended. But there are also more armies here. This is a, uh... It's a wild situation! But they're fighting each other, and that's good. It's very good. I can help my allies out. Or I can take the Pools of Despair out from under them. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Because that'll also cut them off, so it's, it's, it's not purely selfish. The only issue is I need to take them. I, I need to take them right now. Because if I don't, I'm going to get ganged up on by multiple armies. And she can't deal with that. So what she's going to do... Um, so right now we, we are under their range. We're under their... What, what is the range here? Unfortunately, it doesn't say. Okay. This is unfortunate. Because now I can't take this. Because my allies just got destroyed. And if I... I have an idea. They will go for El Calabad, almost certainly. 
But if they see me here, they're going to come back to the Pools of Despair to try and defend it, which means they won't take El Calabad, which means it'll still be under the hands of the Rakaf Dynasty. And I'm going to have to get rid of the Rakaf Dynasty, judging by the looks of things. Or maybe they'll maybe they'll accept vassalage now. No, they still don't want to. So I'm going to let the Disciples of Nagash take El Calabad. And to do that, I'm going to need to pull back. So we are going to pull Kalida back to Khemri. I deign to move. Let's begin. This is where All right. rises from the sands. That army is about to be completed. King Lamizash can hunt down the remaining green skins. we got to catch them all. Okay, that sounded like Pokemon there. That's not what I intended. Alright, unfortunately we aren't going to catch them all. What we are going to do, though, is put ourselves into a position where we can recruit more Ushabti. Which is what we really want. My will be done. Two more here. And honestly... Let's remove this unit. Or let's actually remove the Xandri Eternals. I want to... No, I want to keep them so that I can give them to... Uh, what's his name? So I'll remove the regular Skeleton Warriors. And we will awaken these Ushapti Ancients. We'll have four Ushapti and two Ushapti Ancients. Which is, I think, what we had to start with. Cetra. Can you catch them? Let's find out. No, I think, I think they're going to get away. Which is very annoying. But once again, Cetra will now be able to recruit as well. Though, there's nothing really for him to recruit here. I don't have... Yeah, I don't see any units that we want. Oh my god, you can recruit multiple. Oh my god, is this SFO doing that? I think it's SFO doing that. Where you can actually recruit multiple of the regiments of renown. Depending on certain circumstances, which I think is great. Oh, this doesn't look fun. That doesn't look fun at all. Oh! Oh! That curse. The thing that our, uh... Our giant hell vultures do. That's something you can actually equip units with. Or at least... At least, um... What's his name, Can? Arkan. That's, that's no guarantee that we can. But this is... This is a dangerous army. Sefko. Two tomb scorpions? One of them with the Bound Birona's Time Warp? A Bound Banishment? What? Oh, no way. Of course, that makes sense. This makes total sense. Tomb Scorpions are the, are the sarcophagi of certain Lich Priests. So there's literally an upgrade that allows you to use Lich Priest spells from a Tomb Scorpion. How fucking cool is that? We won't use it, of course, because Lich Priests. That is still super awesome. Now, oh man, I want to... I want to do it. I want to fight them. But I'm hesitant. They're a disciple of the Hawk Legion. Oh, this is that ability that they have, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, what about your upgrades, huh? Well, Ops Curse of Flesh. Yeah, you already have that. Can you get... You probably get the same thing, right? Unit upgrades? No. Uh, what about the catapults? Did they get something? Explosive magics. Oh. Actually increase the uh, damage of the catapults? That's cool. The Xandri Black Shields? Did they get anything unique? No. Looks like the basic stuff. Swarm of Tomb Scorpions. The Swarm of the Tomb Guardian spawns a unit of Tomb Swarm when at 50% health. Holy crap, because they're, like, being inhabited by scorpions. Man, this is all from the Tomb King's Extended mod, by the way. And goddamn, that is so cool. They're so flavorful. Alright, do I attack? Because if I don't, they might attack me here at Xandri. I'd rather not have that. So we're going to engage. This is giving me a close defeat, which I, I can believe. Because that's a scary army. But I think we can do it. And this will be the last fight of the uh, the episode. I think we can do it. It's just gonna be a straight up open field. No no terrain of any kind anywhere. 
just a battle, uh, I, I would say, to the death, but they're all already dead. Out on the sands. I'm excited. Should be an interesting fight. I mean, ultimately, it's just going to be, you know, mashing infantry lines together. That's how any Tomb Kings fight goes. Um, however, yeah, they have the range advantage, so I need to advance. I have one Screaming Skull Catapult. And we have no magic. That's rough. Oh, man. Sometimes you just get shafted. All right. I'm going to uh, put the... Skeleton swordsman in the front. They can die, for all I care. Um, and I want to actually have... So I'm going to use a bit more of a multiplayer deployment. Taking overall a, uh, a wedge formation. This will allow me to... Um, kind of control the flow of where my units are. And will also prevent any kind of double up fire from taking out too much. Oh yeah, these guys... Oh, they vanguard. And do these guys vanguard? They don't. Alright. But this is... This is interesting. So we're gonna put the Corsairs back here. We're gonna basically advance in a, a flying wedge. Um, he will advance with a unit of Corsairs. Shoshank will advance with another unit of Corsairs. And Hetakor will advance with the final unit of Corsairs. Three Corsair Princes. Very thematic. Uh, that'll allow our Corsairs to pack some punch. And then the Nehekar Warriors, who can Vanguard, I think we'll do so. Where, where are they weakest? Nowhere, really. It seems like they're, they, they have, their forces uh, have a little bit more of a disposition on that side, so... Oh, no, wait. Now we can't Vanguard? I thought we could. Is it just the... Ah, oh, it's just the Legion of the Underworld. Okay. Well, then. Um... That's fine. I'm gonna put the Necker Warriors a bit further up. Again, I don't really care too much if these guys die. Alright, the Legion of the Underworld will be there. They can hit on the flanks. It can be Group 2. Group 3 can be the Flock of Jaff and Uilat's Servants. My uh, bird squad. And my Catapults, I wanna actually keep as far back as possible. To where we can shoot at targets of semi importance. Ultimately, actually, do I want to shoot at their catapults? I wonder. If I put my catapults in their range, will they target mine instead of my infantry? That's honestly not a bad thing if they do. So, let's let's do it. We advance. You guys pull into there. The birds can engage the bats. That's fine. Seriously, did I just friendly fire my birds with my catapults? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Alright, so Xandri Black Shields, um... Uh, okay. We want to go into formation as soon as we get close. But we don't want to do it just yet. Unless... No, uh, they, they have no missile units. Yeah, unfortunately our Xandri Black Shields are taking a pounding. As are our Corsairs. That is not good. But, we are killing their bats. Once we have their bats down, we will have aerial superiority. And the Assyrian's Legion of the Underworld is going to mulch their flank. So we should be good there. It's just we're going to take some nasty damage on the approach. However, one of our catapults has... Well, it's it's rustled the jimmies of this catapult squad, so that's something. It's not much. But it's something. Alright, the Flock of Jaff. They've taken a bit of damage. That's okay. Um, we are in combat, so we can't deploy... All right, you know what? Here, do we want to do that here? I don't know if we want to do that here. Seriously, I friendly fired myself with my. That happened again. I can't believe that. <laughs> okay, so here's what we want to do: the flock of Jaff. All right, now we take formations. Uh, don't engage there. Engage here. Why are they retreating all of a sudden? No, really. Why are they retreating all of a sudden? I am very confused. I'm not sure why that would give them a retreat order. Alright, um, we win here. They're just tearing these catapults a new one. These guys can pull in this way. Although, I feel like that's no longer necessary. 
Oh yeah, we are... That is a White King. I don't want to engage the White King. We need to have our uh, Tomb Princes on the Tomb Scorpions. What are you guys doing? They're just standing here. It's like our, our attack orders were just cancelled. Sometimes this game confuses me. Yeah, we need to take down the Tomb Scorpions. Um... Alright. How's the flock going? Where are you guys at? You guys move this way and just bomb these dudes. There we go. That'll do something. And, uh, drop in on these catapults while you're at it. Uh, the... Yeah. That'll, that'll keep them all distracted. And we will summon crabs to assist in the distraction of large carrion creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Crabs and vultures. A most unlikely alliance. But a beautiful one. Just truly a delightful alliance. I couldn't ask for better. Wow, just look at what they've done. They've just destroyed, like, three units here. Which is great. Right, uh, the Xandri Black Shields are just gonna have to hold. I think they will. Uh, they probably won't kill anything. Or they probably won't, like, win the fight, but... Look at this! Tomb Prince! World Beater taking out this Tomb Scorpion. Just wrecking it. I mean, he's got help, of course, so he's not taking the brunt of all of that damage himself, but goddamn. You're doing good. Alright, our crabs are doing fine. Unfortunately, they still have an active catapult, but I need to get my other Tomb Prince in here. I need to take that catapult out, too. Alright, I'm gonna pull out my, uh... You, uh, drop this on him. No, don't drop it on him. Drop it on this spearman, that's fine. Get on those catapults. I don't know what you guys are doing. Where's the flock of Jaff? Ah, yeah, our Screaming Skull catapults probably got killed by... Ushapti? Yep. Surprise, surprise. They did the same thing they did last time, which is uh, fair. That's what I would have done. <laughs> Alright, uh, the Legion of the Underworld can now pull in. How are they doing? Nakur warriors doing all right. Xandri black shields seem to like the, the only thing they're doing is holding, just fine, admittedly. Okay. All right. Uh, do we tide call? I don't think so. I don't think there's enough left to warrant a tide call. Um. Well, that's not entirely true. There's definitely a bit left. So I'm gonna drop my uh, Shopti summon here. You guys pull over that way. I want to uh, get some support there. Want some support here, and then I got a third unit of regular old skeleton warriors can pull in this way. It's gonna be a costly fight for sure. Okay, um, Tomb Prince on the Ushapti. Alright, they're dead. Or their leader's dead. Our birds have done a number on them. Okay, the White King is a problem, so there's a White King and a Tomb Scorpion here. I need to take out- I really need to take out the, uh, Tomb Scorpion. That I do not want to lose. I do not want to lose the Flock of Jaff. That'll take quite a while to re, uh... I think we're gonna lose the Flock of Jaff. No, they're not crumbling. There's seven of them, so feasibly we can still use them against, uh, certain units. I want all of these guys to pull in. Alright, we're, we're winning. It's over. Never mind. We don't need to worry about it anymore. We beat them. Again, we lost our Screaming Skull Catapults, but that seems to be it. Possibly some... No, we didn't even lose any Skeleton Warriors. Our Tomb Princes are still alive. I mean, Amenemhetum's good. Took a bit of damage, but it's okay. We really need to kill that thing. Oh, Tomb Swarm, huh? Yeah, we got some Scorpions crawling around. Oh, they look more like Scarabs. Uh, they're gone. Uh, we may lose these Nahakar warriors before it uh, before it finishes. Uh, fight's over, isn't it? I don't see anybody left. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh no. Okay. The skeleton spearmen. Which, for reasons that are beyond me, have been defeating my Xandri Black Shields.
Right, that ought to do it. Unfortunately, I suspect that the army that we just defeated, which should be completely destroyed, because that's normally what happens to undead armies, is probably going to still be intact and will run. Look at the kills. The, the birds. The birds, man. Carrion build confirmed. Holy shit. I'm giving him more carrion. I personally like carrion. I know they're kind of widely considered to be pretty useless, uh, but they're they're good harass. Uh, and you you might be thinking, okay, why would you use carrion for harass when like skeleton horsemen are better? They're more durable. They they hit a little harder. Um, and that's because skeleton horsemen can be like warded off by spears. Carrion you can just drop down. They they come down from the skies unless there's air power to to ward them off. So like obviously they're not as good against certain factions that have extensive air power, but you just drop them onto a unit of archers, and that ar unit of archers is not firing at you during your approach. Yeah, the carrion will probably die, but they'll distract a high-value ranged units for a time and allow your uh, your units to uh, approach unmolested, which is always good. Yeah, I'm I'm very very happy with the performance of. Both the flock of Jaff and Uelap servants. And the Usurian's Legion of the Underworld. Oh my god. <laughs> they just. They took no damage and, like, cleared out three whole units of skeletons by themselves, unsupported. Oh, these guys are awesome. The Xandri Black Shields, I'm pretty disappointed with. Like, they couldn't even beat basic skeleton warriors. Okay, we lost uh, the Nakara warrior. That's fine. Okay. Uh, that is a victory. Uh, we could chase them down, but that will leave us exposed. Which I don't like. But I could wipe this army. Is it worth it? I have no idea. I have no idea. Because if we go there, we probably can't come back. <sighs> oh yeah, and there's... No, Ar Arkans there. We don't want to deal with that. We're going back to Xandri. They're gonna get away. That's just the unfortunate truth of it. Alright, Prince Hethacor. Why don't we, uh... Why don't we start doing this type of stuff? Let's at least buff up our infantry. Oh, you're... Yep. Oh! Of course, I totally forgot that that was even a mechanic. Capturing siege weapons. We capture two of their screaming skull catapults. Holy shit. That's clutch. We just got our uh, we just got our siege contingent back in this army. That is, that is so cool. I love that mechanic. All right. Uh, anything to auto resolve? No. Looks like the green skins are gonna get away. Unfortunately. Um, at least we have Nakara again. Somebody could just show up and take it. Well, well, our back is turned. But ultimately, I don't care. Like. I'm just taking the settlement so that the Greenskins don't immediately recolonize it. And if they want to, if they want to come back and take it now, I got two of my armies there to smite them. So, they're welcome to try. Uh, yeah, no caskets. Not until amendments have been made with the Lich Priests. Not until they've shown deference and knelt and begged for Cetra's forgiveness. Alright guys, that will be the end of today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please leave it a like. And we will be back soon for the continuation of Cetra's glorious unification of Nehakara. It will happen. Mark my words. His will be done. <laughs>